So some of you asked me in the comments or in private message to do a course for beginners. So thank you for the feedback because that enables me to improve the contents of the channel. But anyway, this course is designed for everybody. So I'm going to use Ample Sound Guitar Martin, okay? But if you do not have a license, you can use the free Guitar VST plugin AJ Amazu. So check out what we're going to play. Okay, so as a beginner, how could you start writing songs in the strum of you? Well, first thing, you need a chord progression. So the one I'm proposing today is very common in pop and country music, which is a B minor, a B minor 7, an A major, and a G major. Secondly, you need to work on the strum pattern. So though there is no magic recipe for that, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to make it sound real. So here we go. Okay, so in your do, just create a new MIDI track, create a new MIDI clip, make sure that the tempo is set at 85 BPM and that the global track delay is set at minus 50 milliseconds. Then select Ampo Guitar M and drag it into the new MIDI track. Uh, select the Strom library and in the main view, just decrease the FX gain down to zero so we won't have any scratchy sounds in the background. Then press DO on your keyboard so you activate the palm mute mode. Go to the effect sections, go to reverb and deactivate the standard reverb. Then go to the strum view, activate the strum mode and create a new MIDI grid by clicking on that button. And then we shall start. So in this video, we are going to work on the chord bank and the strum pattern. So we said that we needed a chord progression. So let's create one. First, we'll start with a B minor, first position. Then we'll go with a B minor seven in the second position on the fretboard. Then we'll go with an A major, first position, and a G major, first position as well. Now we need a strum pattern. So the strum grid is comprised of four bits or one measure. And ordered in lines on the left, you got strum sequences, and each one of them will enable us to generate a specific sound. Okay, so a good way to start strum patterns is to play root notes. So if you select chord number one, which is a B minor, we can play root notes with this sequence, which is string number five. So let's insert two MIDI notes there and there. Let's click on them, hold, and drag it to the right. So we make sure they have the last half a bit. Then we can insert a downstroke, okay, which is triggered with this sequence. Click, hold, and drag it to the right. Then we can insert another downstroke, then an upstroke, a downstroke, an upstroke, and a downstroke again. We click, we hold, and we drag it to the right. Then on the fourth bit of the measure, we can insert another downstroke, but this time with the treble open. So we click, we hold, and we drag it to the right. Okay, so now that we have the strum sequence, we can work on the velocities. So a good thing to do when working with velocities is to ask yourself, where do I want to put emphasis? So this song is a pop ballad, okay? So emphasis will be put on the second and the fourth bit. So it won't be stupid if the two down strokes that I show there will be higher in intensity than the other MIDI notes. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, so if we let the two down strokes with the default value of 90, we need to decrease the velocity of the other down strokes to say 60. 
Okay. And that one too. So what about the upstrokes now? So for a guitar player, it would be easier to strum down than to strum up. Okay, so the intensity of the downstrokes will, in general, be higher than the velocity of an upstroke. So for that reason, we can decrease the velocities of the two downstrokes, upstrokes, sorry, to 40. And that will already sound super great. Then for the downstroke with the treble open, we can increase the velocity to at least 100 because at 90 it doesn't pluck all the strings of the chord and we want that. So then for the root notes, you can increase the first one a little bit like to 100 and we need to decrease the velocity of the second root note to 60. And now we can program the chord switch. Okay, so what we want is to have the chord switch right before the start of the third beat, okay, in anticipation. So what we can do is to close the plugin, go to the MIDI note editor. We can draw a C1 at the start of the clip, okay, C1 will trigger chord number one, the B minor, and we'll have a C sharp one at the start of the second half of the second beat, okay, in anticipation of the third beat. Then we draw a C3, which will trigger pattern number one, and we want it to last the whole measure. Then we want the A major with the D1, and once again, a D sharp one to have the G major in anticipation of the third beat of the second measure. And once again, we want the pattern to last the whole measure. And that is what we have. So it sounds cool, but I want a transition note when switching from the B minor 7 to the A major. So what we can do is come back to the plugin and we can insert a new MIDI note, okay, which will be the sequence string number six. And we can create a new chord, which will be a B minor in the first position, but with the F sharp as the lowest note. Okay, that note will be triggered by this MIDI note. So then we close the plugin we come back to the MIDI clip and we insert an E1, which will trigger chord number five, right before the start of the second measure in anticipation. And that is what we have. Okay, so we need to design a transition from the G major to the B minor. So we can do it with an A major, so no need to create another chord. We just have to draw a D1, okay, which will trigger A major. So then we come back to the plugin and we'll have a problem because what we want is to have the transition played or generated by this note, okay, the lowest note of the A major. But we can't do it if we have this sequence in the strum grid because that is string number six. So what we can do is to create another sequence, import everything from sequence number one, and just modify the position of this MIDI note right there. Then we come back to the MIDI note editor, and instead of having a C3, we'll have a C sharp three, which will trigger pattern number two. And here we go. Okay, I hope you found this video clear, concise and useful. If you did, just give it a thumbs up. If you have any difficulties, just leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. Then if you do not want to miss any content on how to play and mix guitar and bass VSTs, 
just subscribe to the channel and see you next time.